So Lydia Kepler is the new vehicle sales manager at Motorsport Pardon Island and also the winner of the sales manager of the year um, award for the Motoring Woman of the Year Awards 2020. She is no stranger to awards or winning. Lydia has an impressive list of accomplishments to her name and this is probably due to her hairpin focus and sheer determination. Um, her competitive nature and love for the motoring trade pair well together to produce a successful woman that is extremely passionate about her job. So without further ado, let's welcome Lydia Kepler, proudly brought to you by Sariti Solutions. Hi Lydia. Hi Dej. Oh wow, thanks for that great introduction. <laughs> You're welcome, Lydia. I mean, everything I said was factual, so I believe it's the truth. So, yeah. well done on your award, by the way. Mm, thanks very much. Yeah, how did that make yeah. you feel? Oh, no, awesome. It was a great, great um, event to take part in. And yeah, my team was very proud of me and family and all my Facebook friends. And um, yeah, I've got a lot of old clients um, also on my um, um, social media so yeah it was it was well received oh thank you okay so Lydia let's start off by you telling us a bit more about your life journey and what led um, to your current position um, in your career in motoring mm, um, yeah Desh, um, I've been in motoring just more than 19 years now mm -hmm. started off in sales um, with Audi Mm -hmm. And um, I spent the first seven, eight years in Johannesburg. Uh -huh. And then, um, but yeah, for about six, seven years, I was number two in the country. Wow. And in yeah, 2008, I was number one salesperson for the whole of Audi South Africa. Uh -huh. And then we moved down to Cape Town, and um, it took me another three years, and I did it from there. Okay. And then I decided time to move on. You've sort of, you know, done what you wanted to do and yes. there wasn't more scope. Yes. So I went into management and thoroughly enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and the last year now I've been with uh, Motors Ford mm -hmm. and also a whole new venture, a whole new ball game, um, but really enjoying it. Oh, that's awesome. Can you tell us a bit more about your dealership maybe? You are in Cape Town, Pardon Island, right? Yes. Yeah, it's um, um quite a, it's a very it's an old dealership. They mm -hmm. um, have got plans to move in the near future, okay. but it is yeah in quite an industrial area, um, so it's well known in the Cape Town area. Um, like I said, it's a dealership that was there many moons ago, mm -hmm. and big industrial area. So perfect for more for fleet sales and um, lots of traffic and yeah. So now we're doing quite well. What can you say about Motors itself? I mean, um, um, you know, Motors at uh, uh, the group holder or the holder of your uh, yes, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the the group environment is, is yes. awesome. It's a, it's a very well known group, and um, they've had a, a name change in the last, I think, year or two. Yes. Um, but for the rest, they've got a huge dealer network and lots of brands, which makes it easy. So if you do have a client that is looking, you know, for something else, or obviously we have to deliver the cars all over the country, we can quickly phone a dealer up country and say, please help assist yes. deliver a car for us, you know, and you you should of the same service that you sort of giving your clients that you know that they'll do the same. Right. So that's always very helpful. Was that a sales pitch for um, Motors, by the way? <laughs> Uh, absolutely. <laughs> you just being Lydia, the sales manager, right? <laughs> Listen, people buy from people, absolutely. not always dealerships. Absolutely. So yeah, I've had a huge okay. client base that followed me all the way from Johannesburg, and yeah, I'm still delivering cars all over. Uh, <laughs> My motto is from Cape to Cairo, literally. Wow. <laughs> yes. Okay, so um, Lydia, I want to ask you to jump from work to um, more you. You know, you've obviously accomplished accomplished a lot and I'd like to share some of these accomplishments um, and the reason for these accomplishments with um, our viewers so um, I, let's start off by you telling us what actually drives you and motivates you daily oh absolutely um, I'm a people's person and um, I love customers um, customer satisfaction just 
um, serving people, making, you know, an exceptional experience of buying that little car, you know. Yes, yes it, it, it could be a small, you know, in, in, in a salesperson's eyes, it could be a small little car and, and you just think it's another deal and get it out there. Yes. But um, to me, it's very important to, to make it a wow experience, you know, from the moment they walk in, treat people um, special and make it special so it's a memory take photos and share it and you know so because people look down the line and they share that with other friends and colleagues and family and and that's how you grow your business yeah so yeah it's very important to you know to do absolutely everything i'm i'm, I'm absolutely customer driven and that's what i've my whole life is my whole motto has just been around that yes now um so what advice would you give to young girls that dream or plan on entering a male-dominated industry like ours? Yeah, yes, it used to be in the years ago when, when I started, but i um, proud to say now that, you know, even the dealership where I am, my sales force are three quarters women, my financial manager is a woman. So yeah, no, the woman is, is very strong in, in, in dealerships at the moment. And I think it's, it's great. Um, women are very dedicated, you know, paperwork, getting the processes right. And um, I find them a, a, a lot more dedicated. They take it very seriously. And um, it's, a, it's a great industry to be in. Yeah. And oh, I would tell any woman to definitely venture into this and make a career of it. And it is so exciting. Not one day is the same. It's not a boring job. I mean, today you go in and something happens and then, you know, just that a little note you get from a client or a bunch of flowers or just an email. And then, you know, it just makes you so happy and you just can't wait to get there the next day and start a new day. And yeah, like I say, not not two days is ever the same in our industry. So that's what makes you keep on coming back. Definitely. I can sense the passion in your voice there. Oh, uh, yes, uh, Yana, I'm very passionate. Uh, <laughs> Lydia, um, tell me, in the industry or within the industry, have, has there been any figure that you have idolized or, or being mentored by? Yes, oh, definitely. I started my career in the McCarthy Group, and there's one man that stands out absolutely, and that was Mr. Brand Pretorius. Um, he wow. was. <laughs> what are you well, looking for? I'm looking for the book. I have this book. Oh, right yes, yes. I also I have one of that, and I've got it personally signed. So, <laughs> yeah, every year at all the McCarthy Awards, I met him and. It was just great when that man walked in. I mean, you just a, a drop in the bucket and he would walk straight up to you and go, good evening, Lydia. Aww. And that made such an impression, you know, on me. And um, yeah, so that's absolutely something, uh, some person that I look up to Aww. immensely in the motor industry. Yes. So yeah, and I've read all his books and oh, no, what just such an amazing man. Yeah, well, like I, I also have read uh, the, the recent book. Uh, well, there's so much of, history and it's so rich with um information and yeah. uh, so educational and there's so much we can learn from that so yeah, yeah. That's awesome. i wish i could find my book it's usually yeah uh, but anyway <laughs> okay um so lydia tell me how do you feel about like the mental state of a woman and and how can women improve especially now during COVID times um and and you know all of the the, the um heartache um that have come um or you know that have come along with uh, uh losing loved ones and that type of thing so how would you advise women to improve their mental state um yeah and to stay inspired i mean we've had a couple of um you know cases in our dealership and my husband's also in the motor industry yeah. he's had seven people in his branch that lost close family you know a brother a sister a father so it, it it's real and it's very difficult to keep people motivated, but um, I just found what we did is we kept very busy. We didn't, you know, we didn't sit back. We didn't just blame it on COVID. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we we definitely stuck to all the protocols. We did all the sanitizing. We put up the shields, and we made our clients feel safe. Yeah. And then what we did is we also took business out to clients. We didn't just sit and wait for people to come in. Yeah. And we had lots of team talks. We started little Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, at the time so it was serious lockdown, we did bake-offs and dancing things and oh, just small things to, you know, uplift each other. And it was every, you know, every now and again, somebody would have a down day. 
and yeah it was just to pick each other up and uh, just carry on through this life goes on i mean Absolutely. i don't think we're gonna go back to normal very quickly mm-hmm. so it is something we're definitely gonna have to get used to yeah, but we, we, we strive to yeah we you know and, and you've got to by showing you know each other how we respect your space and your you know sanitizing things before you touch it we do the same with clients and clients appreciate that you know yeah. just a wipe of a steering wheel and quickly spraying a key you know yeah. you can just see the the you know the absolute appreciation in a, in a client's face yeah. and or in relief. a colleague you know and the relief you know? and the relief yes <laughs> yeah and then i had COVID myself i got sick on christmas day so i spent like three weeks flat in bed we were my husband and i was very sick but thank goodness yeah we pulled through so i've got empathy on that side um know what it's like now you know because i think in the beginning you sort of just brushed it off and didn't you know take much notice it wasn't real yeah but then it hits home and then then you realize you know so yeah no difficult times but we have to get through it we have to carry on working we have to sell cars we have to make a living and people have to be mobile thank you for sharing that with us um you know a lot of people still don't want to share their experiences and and you know if they have gotten COVID, um so yeah. it's important for people to come forth and to share this so that um they can be the pillar of strength for other women um and other yes. people really oh, no, absolutely yes okay so no, I'm, I'm quite proud of it i'm a survivor that's how i see it yay. <laughs> <laughs> yay. um i don't need an injection <laughs> you don't <laughs> you're a survivor no. <laughs> I'm sure many women that are going to watch this would be, um, as you said, COVID would be with, with us for some time. Um, and so, you know, whoever's going to watch this and are going through difficult times um, within isolation or within, um, you know, within the, the illness, they will look to this and say, well, I'll remember that Lydia went through it and she has overcome yeah. it. And look how, you know, she's strong now. So thank you for that. Um, and actually, no. Let's Welcome. get to my next question for you, Lydia. Mm. Women don't always support other women. What's your advice to change this mindset of these women? Yeah, that's true. That's very true. I find women are very jealous of other women, especially successful women. Mm. And, um, you know, it, it's it's so wrong of us. It's, it's very important to be a pillar of strength, to, you know, pat somebody on the back and especially now that i've got my own team and i've got more sales ladies on um, in my team at the moment um it is just amazing to see and and once you've gone through that barrier and you start uplifting each other and give compliments and helping and see other people also you know doing well um it, it does so much for their own self-esteem and you can just see how they're absolutely blossoming and selling more cars and not trying to please you but um you know you can just see how it you know how it uplifts them it's it's and especially then you start doing well they start earning more you can see that they're doing more for their families it's just it's a ripple effect it's yes. amazing to see yes no definitely lydia so this was not part of my um uh you know planned questions for you but oh no should i be scared <laughs> before we went into this interview um you you said something of great interest to me you asked me what car was that behind me and i said to you it's a mercedes 71 model something something <laughs> and you said well i have or my hubby has a real one <laughs> so, no 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 my hubby that? and i <laughs> okay i like we that. share a passion and a hobby yeah uh, tell me about tell me about that. what do you have what what um, what cars do you have what classics do you have and what's your favorite and well what do you have Yes, um, we've got a collection of old Mercedes and um, I grew up with a dad that only drove Mercedes and so did his dad. Okay. So on our honeymoon, we drove past an Adilish, well, an a, a, a old place that sold these old cars in Neisner mm-hmm. and we saw this old uh, Merc. So that's where it all started. It started with a 1958, it's called the Ponton. Okay. And yeah, that was our first one and, but, oh, that is like, um, it's almost like kittens. They just they just multiply, you know. <laughs> the other one would get an email that you know starts like she needs a home, and you expect this beautiful little puppy or kitten or doggy or something. I got a car and say she needs a home. So yeah, the our little collection yes. then grew. 
from the 1958. Um, the one behind you is actually called the W Triple One Coupe. Okay. Those cars were hand built in the 19 late 1960s, and they were actually more expensive than a Rolls Royce. That was the beginning of S Class Merc. Wow. And he's got them. It's a very very rare car. Yeah. And um, we've got a beautiful white one with red leather seats. Mm -hmm. That's his favorite. And then we've got a very special car, um, a Pagoda, Mercedes Pagoda. It's a mm -hmm. little sports car. And um, and then my favorite one is the Bobby Ewing. Everybody knows that from the Dallas, Dallas one, right? Bobby drove a red one. I've got a red one exactly oh. like that. So yeah, and that keeps us busy. Um, we've got soft tops for um, the summer times and no rainy seasons, and then we've got our winter ones, the ones who's got little wipers that works. So yeah, that keeps us busy. Okay, so we're gonna have some of those pictures up on the screen for our viewers. Um, so yeah, so Lydia, yes, going... I'll send you some. Yay! <laughs> okay, so. Um, Lydia, I'm just going to ask you one last question um, and I'd like you to maybe um, leave our, or not even a question, just uh, to leave our viewers with some, with just some last uh, sentiments from you or thoughts from you. Oh, oh sure. Yeah. No, I just want to say thanks for this great initiative. It's great to see women coming out and especially in the motor industry and women doing so well and oh no it's it's it makes you so proud and oh no it's just absolute pleasure and yeah great to be part of this whole initiative and yeah may it go from strength to strength oh thank you so much lydia i really really appreciate all of this love and support and i know that you're going to be a part of this network of ours for a very long time and oh yes absolutely <laughs> thank you very much for your support lydia so um I'd also like to say thank you to our viewers for watching and also please remember to follow us on our social media platforms and don't forget we have thousands of vehicles on sale to choose from countrywide on our vehicle listing page at www.womantalk.co.za and remember viewers we only advertise for bank accredited dealerships. Ladies we know that um, the process of woman empowerment does not happen overnight but it is the small increments and lifestyle changes we make daily such as the habits we adapt the way in which we carry ourselves the way we empower each other and the mindset that we have towards um, a woman in motoring that really makes a difference and that causes a, rip, a ripple effect within the motoring uh, field um, that is why i continue to utilize my woman empowerment platforms mot powered by mfc a division of netbank and i would talk the talk show sponsored by city T solutions to motivate women to make these small um, changes um, in order to become an empowered woman in their field, especially those in the motoring industry, and to optimistically uh, inspire other women in their circle to do the same. And with that, I would like to encourage you, my dear viewers, by reminding you that the question should never be, who's going to let me, it should always be, who's going to stop me? Mm -hmm.